guys and welcome back to Landstriders Futures Edge. That is the mod pack and the server we are playing on. Also, graciously hosted by aim to game servers and I am up in my little park area up here. I've got to say I've noticed there is one thing missing here and that is of course the grass. There are two ways of dealing with the fact that there's no grass here. One of them is I could build a little spiral of dirt coming all the way up here leading in and let the grass grow all the way up here i think that would be nice but not really the quickest way of doing it the other way would be to apply some enchantments which is something that i will be doing if we go and have a look inside here you see i've started work on another room oh wow guys trying to build bookshelves i've recently gone on a cull and got myself a whole load of leather so i'm going to be able to make another i don't know 10 or 13 bookshelves but still not quite enough to do what i want but anyway this block here the enchanter not the cheapest block in the world to make it was a couple of diamond blocks some dark steel and a bookshelf but this enables me to put the enchantments I want onto books. So if I come back here and get a book and quill and place in here, you will see the first exp uh, first enchantment I've decided to go for is the XP boost. Because I have spent a long, long time underground with my spawners. I don't have a moving one yet, so I couldn't move them up to change them. Uh, a long time underground with my spawners, gathering myself a load of XP and a load of glowstone. Can we put this on here? It's only 3 XP. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing today. Another thing that I'm going to be doing today, if we come out here... Oh, I should explain something. You see this thing on the end of my hotbar here, the Ring of Arcana. Uh, this is a ring from Project E. Oh, look, I put my graphics on to fast to try and, like, save some frame rate. I think these are killing me uh, to save some frame rate, but it's done a funny thing to this tree. That's interesting. Oh, well, I'm, I'm probably going to take it off of fast as well because that's not really done much. But, yes, another thing I want to do is replicate this out because this is great. There we go. Let's the, the ring gives me the power of flight, as well as some other things that are not quite so convenient. But yeah, the power of flight is amazing. But I would like to get the water sorted for this. And to do that, we're going to need a pump, a tank, and a whole load of tubing. Man, I am a terrible, terrible YouTuber. This ring was gifted to me by Halali. I think is how it's pronounced. If you want, you can see how their name is written down there. I am terrible with names, though, as you guys know. Right, getting back to the job in hand, we are going to be building a fluid pump. This is going to sit in the middle of the water here. Uh, we're actually going to have this duplicated out sort of four times in a petal fashion around this middle bit. And then we'll have little um, ender farms coming off of that as well. But that's getting a little bit of a head of, head of ourselves. How do we build this fun pump? pump. Wow, words. That's a very good question. I mean, I'm going to start with this iron uh, iron mechanical component. It needs a little bit of copper in the middle and some iron around the outside. For some reason, I have decided that I am going to do this manually. Yes, okay. Normally, I, sh I shift click stuff, but no, not today. Now, these fluid pipes, these will require some iron plates, and these are made, of course, with the engineer's hammer. Now, I brought an absolute shed load of iron, and I'm going to turn most of this into iron plate. Because I'm going to need this. I'm going to need more than just a little bit of iron pipe, basically. But we'll take that for now. And we also need a few more for that, which I believe. Yes, we can now completely do that. Now, this. I'm going to put it down on the side here so we can talk about its functionality. Boom. Oh, normally there's a. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's black. I just. I can't see it across against the sky. If we come around this way, we can see it a little better. Now, this will pump liquid all from this bottom edge here. If I take my torch out of my bar the blue indicates that it's an input and the orange indicates output so what we will do is we will have some of this iron pipe coming out it then needs a tank attached to it which i forgot to bring with me i was going to bring a pressurized tank with me and then you need to fill it with some power so let me go and get those things done and then we'll think about how we're going to run the pipe in this way i think we're going to should we do a little experiment quick oh it's dangerous i'm going to take this out of here i'm not sure if i've just lost everything or not this is the experiment this is this is what we're going to see uh, and then we put the stone block over here and that should still all be good okay brilliant and then we're going to end up pumping it into there so maybe that ladder will have to change maybe not 
So you're probably wondering what's going on here, and I've got to admit, this is more a construction of concessions than doing exactly what I wanted. I started off by placing the pump here that we've met earlier on in the episode, uh, just right in the middle. Uh, and I was like, okay, well let's run some water pipe off. You can see down the bottom there, we've got a little bit of water pipe. Now I knew we could put scaffold on it, so I decided to make a little bit of decking here. And that was just kind of running in along the bottom. And then I was like, okay, now how can we power this? And I thought the Stirling engine was a obvious idea. We got that from just over there. It was um, parked on top of the farm. So I pulled that over and I was like, okay, so how are we going to power it? Obviously, we're getting wood from the farm, right? So maybe if we put a alloy smelter down, because that's the only sort of powered furnace I have that can run off of the same power that that can. Uh, and that will make some charcoal, which kind of shuttles it all along lovely. It's just got a little item filter on here for that. Uh, then on this other side, I've got a double hatch array here. And this is just literally shipping whatever, whatever can fit across into here. I didn't really want the silver birch to replant at the moment, but it's okay. It's no big deal. We will live with that. I'm taking the sand out because the sand needs to be taken out. Uh, I'm also trying to replenish with dirt. I forgot to go and grab the dirt. This was one thing that I did not set up. Uh, where this is all coming through here, I gotta say I don't like it. I don't like it. Even if we had the uh, conduit facade, you know, the blocks that cover everything up, we've got more than a few of those in post for them. I still think those just going into the side will look a bit funny. Maybe we want to replace it with a factory block or something like that. But what are we gonna do next? Well, I think... We could do with another one of these, just over here. Now, I have got a whole load of bags on me and a few uh, farm blocks and stuff like that. I've just thought that it's not going to be able to build just floating in the water like that. Out the back here, I got quite a few, quite a few chests, quite a few chests. These are filled with the bits that I need for three of these. Uh, flower petals? Farm petals? Yeah, I'm going to call them the farm petals, actually, because uh, then it'll be like a flower farm. Yeah? Well, a farm flower? I'm not, I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, okay, I'm going to try and fit as many of these things into my backpack as possible, and then I think maybe a time lapse?
So now I've got four flower petals, farm petals, farm petals, we're going to call them farm petals. I've started hooking up a whole load of the wiring and utilities to make this stuff all work. And I thought it was going to be just a quick case of getting these sort of made and wired in. But let me tell you, these things are expensive. It's not so much the uh, the actual items themselves, it's the binder. And again, it's not so much the binder itself, it's the binder composite that you have to make it out of. Now you only get four bits for, yeah, four bits of composite. And then you need to cook them down for like a one-to-one -one ratio. And then you need six of those per item. And it's not so much that, because I've got gravel and sand. Like you can make gravel and sand from uh, sag milling cobble. It's the clay. And I thought maybe there would be some specific thing I could do to go through and get clay. Much like in post Phenem, where we made a weird thing with a chemical injection unit and some... Um, some dirt. But the only thing I've been able to find that is even slightly renewable is either this Vespid um, propolis. Now I hear that Beevil Guy has a Vespid spawner so I might go and try and check that out. But the other thing is possibly a Clay Queen. Uh, but that's quite a work down. You've got the Marshy Drone which is um, uh, a base level thing. We can just we can just find a marshy hive. But the rocky one, this is uh, not the rocky, sorry, the dirty one. This requires a rocky and a winter. In fact, that's just a very small couple of steps. Maybe we will get on that, but we're going to leave this for now because, as I say, we need clay. This one is almost ready to go. I just need to make a load of fertilizer, pop it in, uh, and get it doing stuff. And of course, customize it. Customizing is the thing we're going to do there. But I think it's time that we made ourselves the tool that we that I was talking about at the beginning of the episode. We need to go and make ourselves... Now, I was um and ahhing about whether to make myself an actual shovel, because, you know, a silk touch shovel is the thing I'm after. But with this dark pick, uh, I can add the spoon uh, enchantment to it. You can see bottom right of the, the hole right up there. We've got spoon. Who needs a shovel when you have a spoon? All you need to do is uh, combine it with a diamond shovel, which shouldn't be a problem. Also, I want to add a few more things to this. I'll, I'll quickly talk about them now, but we'll probably do that in a little while. Uh, you can see that whilst this has unpowered four on it, 95% uh, of the damage is absorbed by that power. That still means some of the damage is getting through to my pick, as you can tell by how low my durability is. So I'd like to both get unbreaking and mending on this. Now I feel that's a little bit overkill but you know let's let's be strong about it shall we. Anyway I want to make myself a new pick so we're going to come over to our ender IO stuff and grab ourselves just the three here and I was kind of hoping that I'd set myself up a whole load of capacitors. I had not so we're going to have to not make them uh, live but we're going to have to take a moment to actually make them because I want to get this one up to empowered four as well and I need to start with a vibrant crystal. Now thankfully I do have a spare emerald kicking around. I was just about to go on the whole trading process with all the villagers and try and get another emerald but we're not going to do that. We're just going to make use of all the little items we've got kicking around. I've also got a load of vibrant alloy so you can take some nuggets, put it around the emerald. Bam! Vibrant alloy. Uh, I should have made myself the golden shovel. Golden shovel? Diamond shovel as well, but we can do that pretty quick. Okay, so that is the first two levels that I definitely want here. Uh, the other thing that I want is basically the whole set of capacitors. Now I'm going to go through uh, from from this octadatic, uh, oct oct octadic, oct octadic. I don't know. There's, there's many ways of saying that. I think, according to the internet, we went and looked it up. There was some pr um, pronunciation guide. It's octat octactic. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'm going to throw lots of words at you that sound kind of like that. Uh, so we need to make one of those. We also need to make one of these and one of these. Now, because of that, we're actually going to end up needing to make something like seven of these basic capacitors. So I'm going to go on a bit of a, uh, a crafting binge and I will be back in a second. So that was relatively quick to make, but man, trying to power it up when I've been doing some sag milling and some furnacing takes a little while. Gonna have to uh, address the power issue at some point, but let's uh, let's come out here and let's, I don't know, pick a random corner. In fact, let's just dig into the floor. Why does it have to be a corner? We're gonna get rid of all of this stuff eventually anyway. Maybe we'll make a small pond for the interim? No, no, we're just gonna do that. And then we're gonna take these all the way up here uh, and start growing some grass here. Now, I'm not sure if we want to use these as the seed points of some hillocks. 
So like something like this. Maybe I should have brought some extra dirt with me. Like we're probably going to want another one here. And it will rest up against whatever wall we have here. Really have to get round to ripping this back wall out. I can, I can kind of see two spiral staircases coming up either side and I thought that would be uh, a kind of a nice way you've got this little balcony out here maybe we can even extend the balcony with a bit of glass because that won't stop the uh, village uh, the doors being part of the village uh, and then we, we won't worry about losing these to the village because we've already got quite a few villagers and the lag has started from the number of villagers we've got so maybe we will avoid that okay let's come along here and pop a few in like this Need to start thinking about what would make a decent lighting structure for up here. Obviously, we've got torches everywhere and we still managed to miss... Um Hang about, let's try and put this torch down. If I, if I did it with the, uh, the, the pick, I would have ended up putting down the grass, which is kind of not what I'm after. So, we've already multiplied this up. Now, this seems like a good place to start working on it. Excuse me. Seems like a good place to start working on our bees. Now, I've got nothing prepared for this, as you can tell, uh, but I thought it might be a good idea to follow the quest line. Uh, so you see, we've not done the bee house, but we have done the apiary. And the next thing I'd like to do after that is the powered apiary. Uh, it is asking for us to do all this stuff, but this one here, the royal jelly and the propolis as well, now that I think about it, requires industrious or maybe even royal um ro royal bees i can't quite remember the name of the breed that was needed but i am more after clay as i was saying so let's get down this way uh i should have set up some some signs shall we do that let's let's go and have a look and grab some signs So you can see I've made a bountiful bee breeding board. Yeah, I knew that was a bad idea, putting a tongue twister up there. And this tells me exactly what I need to breed to get to the clay. You can see we need to put rot rocky and a basic drone. That's like meadows, forest, wintry, you know, the basic stuff you find in the world. Uh, and if you breed those together, you get a dirty bee. Uh, and then you mix the dirty and the marshy bee to get clay. Shouldn't be a problem, right? So I've got a couple of apiaries ticking over here. We've got the Meadows Queen, because that's what I'm going to use for my basic. Uh, over here we have a Marshy Queen. Now obviously we're not in the right biome and we not haven't got the right flowers. I, I kind of expected that. that. That was something that I knew we would have to work towards fixing. But this side over here, the Rocky Queen, uh, no flowers. The biome is fine, it says no flowers. Now normally it used to be that... Uh, stone and rock were what you wanted like the stone under my feet you know this stuff here would have been enough to trigger them and I used to have some no I haven't got it on me I had some cobblestone on me and I popped it around a few places and it was still not good enough and it tells me that we need to make the Bealyzer to find out exactly what's going on and this shouldn't be too hard fabricator with some water in it uh, tin ingots stained glass panes or normal panes uh, redstone and a diamond. All right, and that's the bee analyzer done, or at least the portable bee ana analyzer. Uh, perhaps at some point we'll make ourselves the uh, static version. But let's use this to have a look at this queen and see exactly what she is demanding that we are not providing. I haven't got any honey. Of course, I haven't got any honey. <laughs> Thankfully, I still had a few honeycombs left over from the Meadows Queen. You remember when we had her in the apiary over there? She ticked over, I don't know, four or five times. So I haven't got much honey, but I've got enough to be getting going with. Does it work its way through the process? Well, anyway, there is the honey drop that we are after. Let's put her in there. Uh, flower type, ore. It wants a bit of ore. Now, thankfully, Halali was just like, hey, I've got all this stuff backing up my... Uh, my sort storage system. Do you want to take it off my hands? And I was like, thank you. And they were like, thank you. And everyone was just like winners in that example. 
Have I taken it off my hotbar? I have taken it off my hotbar. Every now and then I find myself just kind of jumping at a wall going, why aren't I flying? So I'm hoping that this ore is the type that they want. We'll just pop a little coal ore there. Uh, if all else fails, we will try something different. Front. Where have I put her? She's still in the thing. Okay, so you used to drop her in previous versions, and I was kind of relying on that to work. So there we go. That's the rocky and the um, meadows. That That's the basic of this one. So we're going to have a dirty bee relatively shortly in a few breeding cycles. So the last segment made it kind of sound like that I was just going to put down two apiaries and magically the dirt bee would appear. Uh, and that, well, it didn't kind of happen. What happened was I put down the meadows and let them turn over. You can tell by a hole in the roof. Oh, incidentally, guys, I put a roof up. I think I like the blue. Well, it's actually cyan. Uh, it feels kind of calming. And I'm not sure if you guys can see, but where I've got these two dots, we've got almost these angel wings imprinted up there. But yeah, anyway, in here we got some meadows. And I had a rocky uh, apiary right next to it. And they were just kind of turning over. So we ended up mixing the dirty and the basic in a third, third apiary. Uh, and that almost immediately gave me the dirty bee. I think I only had to breed two of them together to do that. And then I needed to go to where that marker is. So over here will give you one of the better ideas of how I've been actually breeding. Just for reference, we are literally stone's throw from Beevil Guy's place, who is also just a little distance from mine. Also, uh, land striders, if you guys were wondering. So I came over here, and you can tell we're super close because there is indeed an XP farm around. I know it's around here somewhere. I saw it. Maybe I don't have the power to get down there anymore. I did see the box around somewhere. There we go. There's an XP farm just over there. Uh, but I've put down two apiaries. One of them is... Uh, has got the marshy drones in and all I'm doing here is just building up a drone stock and then over on this side I've got the dirty drones turning over uh, once again I'm probably just going to end up taking these back with me in fact I'm going to grab these as well because these are no longer needed I'm going to take all of this back uh, so then I had a spare marshy drone I put that in here and then kept on feeding alternately a dirty drone and then a marshy drone depending on what the queen did but essentially uh, swapping them around until I got these clay dr drones and princesses and then I kept on feeding back clays in there to make a pure bread um, clay. And so it brings me to the point where I can just kind of throw this down over here and now I'm, you'll notice I'm putting it not underneath the hole because I'm kind of hoping that the rock traits that it, this uh, clay started from will carry on through. You'll see Yes, indeed, they do not need the sky access, and that is absolutely fine with me. I just need to do a quick setup on these uh, auto refills. Now, because it's only one type of bee, it literally will just feed round and round. Ah, uh, all these problems need to be addressed. Okay, that that's totally fine. We can do that next time. But now I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time when we're going to do a few more things with the bees. Nothing serious, much like this time. It's just probably going to be an amendment on the end. We're going to try and get that going up a little bit more. We're going to have to try and find somewhere to process some bees. And as I say, now that we've got all the clay, we can get the farms fully wired up and working. So I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.